It's scary being a toy doll in the attic. And I'm going to tell you some of the things we see, like in this book, don't turn out the lights. There's a story in here called The Knock Knock Man by Brianna Yovanoff. And this is what happened. The mirror sat in the back corner of the attic, leaning against the wall next to where the chimney stuck out. It was big, much bigger than the one in the bathroom downstairs, almost as big as a doorway. Haley sat in front of it, balanced on an old crate full of dusty jigsaw puzzles. The attic was the size of Arizona with low slanted ceilings and a little round window at one end like a porthole. It was strange that she never noticed the mirror before. She played up here a lot, digging through stacks of her mother's old magazines. Their neighborhood was nice, full of cottonwood trees and rambling parts but mostly she stayed in the house. Her mother didn't like for her to leave the yard alone. The reason, her mother said, was that there were snakes down in the ditches sometimes. And the big road out by the edge of the development was way too busy. But Haley knew the real reason was Kathy. All her life, Haley had heard stories about the terrible things that had happened, the awful tragedy of her mother's kidnapped sister. It was creepy, but familiar, like the safety assemblies they had sometimes at school, all the warnings and the rules. Never tell anyone your name or let the neighbors know you're home alone. Never talk to strangers. There were bad people in the world waiting to snatch up little girls. It was just much safer to stay in the house. In the mirror, Haley's reflection was softer than usual, like seeing herself through a piece of lace. There was a layer of dust on the glass, turning the room behind her warm and blurry. It made her eyes look greener than they were. The way the mirror, mirror leaned lazily against the wall made her feel expected, like it had been waiting here all the time, like a special present just for her. There's a mirror in the attic, she said to her mother. They were in the kitchen under the cut glass ceiling lamp. On other nights, when the sky was low and it got dark early, Haley would be hunched over the table finishing her homework. But now it was summer and there were no long division sets to do, no questions about Gettysburg. So they sat in the yellow glow of the light, peeling glitter polish off her fingernails. Her mother looked up from a stack of receipts. What mirror? Haley shrugged. A fancy one with a big card flower on top. Haley's mother pursed her lips. Oh, then she leaned through the receipts again like she was counting them. That was your Aunt Kathy's she said without looking at Haley. She used to have it in her bedroom. She said it in a flat, final way that Haley was used to. Her mother always sounded half asleep when she talked about Kathy. Haley waited, but this time her mother didn't say the other things, that the world outside was too noisy and too big, too full of monsters. You could never be sure who the bad men were. 
that the Jupiter bushes that look so green and lovely from the window might hide a man with knives. A man who watched with hot, angry eyes, then came to your door in the night and took you. When Haley was little, her mother had called him the Knock Knock Man. Back then, the bad things all seemed far away and the fence in the yard had still appeared big enough to hold her. She made up games and played them by herself, racing through the grass with the sheep tied around her neck like a cape. The games were always about running away. Pirates who stole girls from their beds and took them on adventures, or wicked fairies, or Robin Hood. In her games, she was an explorer, very brave. She would never be lonely or afraid. The knock-knock man was only a dark, smudgy shape somewhere in the distance. Haley peeled the last strip of glitter polish off her pinky nail and didn't look up. That night, she stared at the wall, thinking about the mirror. It looked much too big for someone to have carried it up the narrow stairs to the attic. She wondered how it had gotten there. She pictured it hanging in a bedroom in some other house, while the girl who lived there, Kathy, maybe danced and slept and brushed her hair and sang along to all her favorite songs. Haley was 12 now, but in another month, she'd be 13. She'd be older than Kathy had been on the day she disappeared. Haley never danced or played pirates anymore. When she fell asleep, she dreamed about a place where the curtains were always closed and none of the rooms had doors. The air was dry and muffling. You couldn't hear the road. A house so clean and quiet, it could have been made a paper. The mirror was hard to stay away from. That was the strangest part, the scary part, that she didn't try. The next morning, as soon as she'd eaten her breakfast and put her bowl in the sink, Haley climbed up to the attic and looked at herself. For a second, the picture and the mirror didn't seem like a reflection at all, but like she was seeing someone through a window. There was a dark smudge in the corner of the glass, shaped like a tall, bony shadow. But when Haley turned to look behind her, there was nothing there. The smudge made her think of a skeletal figure, a shambling man coming up behind her. She couldn't see the thing's face, but she could almost feel it seeing her. When she turned back to the mirror, the mark was gone. There was only her reflection. The girl in the mirror had a soft, round face, too cute to be really, be pretty. Haley pressed her hand against her cheek to make them flatter. So did the girl in the mirror. When Haley stopped, her reflection stopped too. Together, they sat, staring at each other toying with the messy sheaf of hair that hung over their shoulder. It was a second before Haley could work out why that was strange. Then she froze. 
the girl in the mirror had the same bony wrists, the square hands, the little flecks of glitter still stuck to her fingernails. But Haley's own hair was pulled back in a ponytail. That was impossible. She closed her eyes, and when she opened them again, her reflection was looking back at her, calm as glass. Everything in its place, freckles, cheeks, ponytail, everything where it should be. Knock, knock, she whispered. She could feel the way her mouth moved, the shape of the words as she said them. But in the mirror, it looked like the girl was saying something else. It wasn't real. The thing she seen in the mirror, she knew that. Reflections weren't like videos or photographs. You couldn't fake them with angles or computers. They might warp or bend. Things like the funhouse mirrors at the fair, but they didn't show you with hair down when it wasn't. They could be stretched or blurry, but they still basically showed you what was true. Anything else was a trick of the light. The dark shambling smudge in the corner had been a trick of the light. But still, the mirror made her nervous. She spent the afternoon downstairs. When Wendy, Tally's mom called to see if Haley wanted to come with them to the swimming pool, she took a long time to answer the phone. The house felt backwards and confusing, like everything was flipped around. Doors that looked right at first all led away from the places she wanted to go. She wasn't sure how the rooms connected. Trying to figure it out made her head ache. She said goodbye to Miss Tally, then followed the tangled pattern in the hallway carpet until she found the living room, where she sat on the couch and waited for her ears to stop buzzing. She seen pictures of her Aunt Kathy on her, at her grandmother's house in the big old album with the fake leather cover. Now she sat trying to remember what they had looked like. The thing she was almost sure of was that girl in the pictures had looked a lot like Haley. She decided she would rather stay inside. Haley was in the attic again. She didn't know how long she'd been there. Her legs felt tingling and numb. The light had changed. Everything was darker. The girl in the mirror wasn't her anymore. At least not the way a reflection was supposed to be. Instead, there were a pair of girls who looked alike. With the same scattered freckles and soft, tangly hair, the same small, straight noses, Haley and a girl she only ever known from her grandmother's faded photographs, just a girl who'd gone missing one hot July day a long time ago. They didn't look like reflections at all. They looked like sisters. What are you doing in there? Haley asked. Her voice sounded flat and far away. Hiding from the knock-knock man, Kathy said. The only way to hide from him is to stay inside. The room in the mirror looked nicer than the one she was in. Kathy leaned closer, reaching out. Is it safe here? It's, it's safe in here, 
It's perfect. If you give me your hand, you can come too. Haley reached back. Under her palms, the glass felt colder than it should have. It was chilly where Kathy was. It didn't make sense, but Haley couldn't remember why. Aren't you rolling in there? Aren't you stuck? Kathy smiled and shook her head. I'm safe. You were kidnapped, though. You were missing. I don't understand. You will. The room in the mirror was bright and much too clean. Haley leaned closer. She had never wanted to be safe inside a glass house before. She had never wanted so much quiet. They leaned towards each other. Kathy's face seemed to ripple. Haley saw a kind of wild joy there, savage and hungry. And then she understood. There was no knock-knock man, at least not the way her mother was afraid of, not hiding in the dark to steal girls. There was only this, a silent, stifling place where nothing got lost or old or dirty and nothing changed. Haley felt the glass go slippery and soft, like it was melting into water. She closed her eyes when a hard, cold hand closed around her wrist. She felt lonely and small and very afraid, but she did not feel surprised. Knock, knock, Kathy whispered. I'm not sure you should look in a mirror the same way.